Welcome everyone to week five of our online Bible study, Mom Set Free. We are back again for another great message from the author of Mom Set Free, Jeannie Cunyon. Jeannie, how's it going this week? It's great. I'm so happy to be back with y'all today. All right. Well, we're happy to hear what you have to say to us about being free from when our children suffer, because I know that is one of the hardest things. I would take their suffering in a heartbeat yes. if I could take it from them and not yeah. have to watch them go through it. Yeah, and I think probably every mama listening would agree with that. I know. Oh, I know. Well, you guys, I forgot to introduce myself last week, and I'm forgot it this week too. So if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Melissa Taylor. Um, I'm on the team with Online Bible Studies here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. I'm also a fellow mama with the rest of you. Um, I don't know what your kids call you, but I have three different names that literally stick. I have one who does indeed call me mama. I have one who calls me mom. And I still have a sweet little girl who usually calls me mommy. Isn't that crazy? Aww. And she's, she's <laughs> about to turn 20. So isn't that funny? But um, no matter what your kids call you, we're glad to have you with us and so glad to have another message from Jeannie Cunyon. So Jeannie, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, this is one of those harder conversations to have mm-hmm. because today we're talking about the freedom to trust God when we have to see our kids suffer and walk through hard things. And like you said, there's, there's just about anything we wouldn't do to protect them from that, right? right. Yeah. I'm thinking of a, a time when one of my boys recently endured a very, very difficult experience at school in which he was being targeted by another student. And it was unbearably painful to send my son to school each day, knowing the circumstances he would likely have to navigate as, as we worked to ensure the situation was properly addressed and resolved at the school. And my mama bear instincts were in full force. <laughs> uh, but I also had to remember that this is part of growing up in a fallen world. And the best thing I can do for him was equip him for the hardship, walk beside him through it, and then point to God's presence in it rather than just simply scooping him out of it, even though that is what I wanted to do. And I think this is another area where we moms feel immense pressure. It's protecting our children from hardship and suffering. And there is a profound difference in helping our kids navigate hardship and providing comfort in their hardship versus feeling guilty or ashamed that we cannot completely protect them from it. And so I want to turn to Romans 8.28 because the Apostle Paul has encouragement for us in this pressure. Uh, He writes, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And this passage can provide us much comfort as parents, but it can also create a lot of confusion. But my hope is today in these couple of minutes that we will ultimately see this passage as an invitation to take a long, deep breath of relief. And I want us to start by acknowledging our free will because God has given us free will and this applies to our kids. We are all responsible for the choices we make. Our kids are responsible for the choices they make. But God is not limited by our choices. He is continually working everything according to his plan and his purpose. We may not always understand God's plan. I know I don't understand his plan a lot, but we have to trust that he is working things for our child's good and for his glory. But here is what gives me so much hope when I see my children endure hardship and suffering when it hurts so much. It's what Paul writes in the very next verse. It's in Romans 8, 29. He says, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. See, when Paul said, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, the good that he is referring to, don't miss this, lean in, okay? The good he is referring to is conforming Mm -hmm. our children into the likeness of his son, drawing their hearts closer to his. What more could we want for our children than for God to conform them into the likeness of his son? That is the good. And of course, what, let's, I mean, let's just be really honest, right? Watching God grow our children in the likeness of Christ, also known as sanctification, it will rarely, if ever, be pain-free. So true. It will break our hearts at times. Mm-hmm. Believers are not exempt from suffering. In fact, scripture is very clear. We should expect it. But as we expectantly wait for that day when God will make everything as it should be, 
Let us not lose sight, mamas, of the privilege we have in being part of God's overall redemptive narrative in our kids' lives. Think about that. We get to be part of God's overall redemptive narrative in our kids' lives. We can have full confidence that he is still on the throne. He still knows exactly what he's doing, that he goes with our children. He is for our children. And somehow, some way, he is working all things together for the good of our children and for his glory. See, this passage has often been used to deduce that God works all things together for our own personal good. So no matter who you are and regardless of how painful those things are, good does not equal good in the way the world describes it, right? It's that assumption that like, if I got, you know, if I, if I got in a car accident, God's going to give me a better car. If I lost my house, God's going to give us a better house. If I, (laughs) if I lost my job, God's going to give me a better job. And yes, good outcomes might eventually arise from the bad, but that is not ultimately the good that God's pursuing and that Paul's speaking about here. So though we can't fix their pain, we can be present in it. This is our role here, right? We can't fix it, but we can be present in it. When our kids are hurting, crushed, or confused, they need parents who are willing to lean into their pain. They need parents who are willing to listen without lecturing, and they need need parents who will love without limits. Yes. And they need us to assure them that God is present in their pain. He will not waste their pain and he will work things for their good through it. And then finally, we can also find extraordinary peace in scripture that assures us that our suffering does not have the final word. Our child's suffering does not have the final word. That all of this heartache and hurt will ultimately produce a hope that will not disappoint because we will share in the glory of Christ. And so to close, I just want to read Romans 5, 3 through 5 to encourage us. Paul writes, and not only that, but we also rejoice in our affliction because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character and proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Uh, That is one of my favorite passages in all of scripture because there is so much hope in it and so much purpose. It just kind of shows that, hey, there there is some purpose behind what you're going through. And um, Jeannie, I really loved when you talked about how, although we can't fix their pain, we can be present in it. And just to be a parent who's willing to lean into their pain, and this is the hard part for me, listen without lecturing, Mm -hmm. you know, because we want to tell them the best way to to fix this, right? Or the best way to get through it, right? But just to listen, it's almost like you crawl maybe into the pit with them to show how you care, but then you can start to walk out together, Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just to, to love them without limits. Um, what another good, honestly, it just all comes down to, to trusting the Lord who made us all, created us and it believe comes back to that. Yes, it does. Yeah. And, and just, this is a hard thing to talk about, like hurt and suffering and right. hardship. And, you know, I'm grateful that in the study, we'll have several more days to unpack this and kind of dive in deeper to scripture that encourages us as moms when it's so hard to watch our kids walk through hard things and just the hope that we can have uh, in Christ as we as we do that beside them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Jeannie, for being with us. And to all you moms out there who um, who may have some children who are suffering in your lives, I just pray that this gives you some hope. Um, maybe um, just to to know that God is there for you to trust. And it isn't up to us to, to be able to fix everything. But wow, you get to be a bright light in your child's life. And I can only imagine that God gave you the child that you're parenting for a reason because mm-hmm. he really trusted you to be the best mom um, to his child that he has given to you. And so, Jeannie, I just feel like we should pray. Would you close us in prayer today? I'd love to. Thank Father you. God, we uh, we love you, and we, you know, we thank you that you are, um, you know, suffer, you know, watching your son suffer, God, mm. that 
you know exactly how we feel when we have to watch our child suffer because you willingly watched your child suffer. You gave us your son because you love us so much. And if you, you know, there's just, if, if you are willing to do that for us, how much more will you give us and do for us? Jesus, we just thank you for laying down your life for us. We thank you that you know what suffering feels like. We thank you that we don't walk through any of this alone as moms, as, as painful and as hard as it can be. We just thank you that you are a savior who knows suffering and that you will um, walk with us through it, that you will not waste it, and that you uh, make hope abound in our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit as we as we go through it. So we just, we love you, Father. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. Uh, And we just pray for any of our kids right now who are going through suffering, who are going through hardship, Lord Jesus. We pray that you would empower us to parent them uh, and to love them without limits. And uh, we pray that they would know your presence uh, and your peace that passes all understanding. Um, And we just thank you for being the good father that you are. We love you so much. And we ask all these things in the in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll be back next week for another message.